I'd like us to begin reading at John 14, 12. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. All right. And I'm just going to turn and read with you. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he, he, he do, because I go unto my Father. 13. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Verse 14. If ye ask anything in my name, I will do it. 15. If you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. 17. Even, okay, even means just like the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you. He's talking. And shall be what? In you. Amen. And 18. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. He makes it personal. I will come to you. All right, you may be seated. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. Um, I'm going to say a few things tonight about letting the Lord be the Lord. In your life. The Lord, the word Lord, is 6,823 times in the Old Testament alone. And it is translated YHVH or Jehovah. It's when Lord is capital L O R D, Lord. Now you could say, well, he was the Lord of the castle. That would be lowercase l, O-R-D. But this is the Lord, Jehovah. Now, some people, when they get saved, they say, Jesus, I want you in every area of my life. I lay my life totally down. It's you, you're in charge, you're the Lord of my life. You can, you can invade my whole world. It's fine with me. Yeah, amen. And that's what we should do. Yeah. Yeah. But there are certain people who put up stop signs. And if I had one of those little paper stop signs with red, you know, was it octagon or hexagon or something? I forget what a kind of gun it is. <laughs> it's one of those guns. <laughs> But they put up a red stop sign. <laughs> because they say, Jesus, you can be here, you can come in here, and you can come in here. I'll just draw a nice little rectangle of where you can go in my life. And I love you, and I thank you for being there, and this is where you can be. Thank you very much. I love you. And they put a stop sign in all the other areas of our life. And I'm going to tell you that... That is way too common. Because people right. keep Jesus out of places they are not comfortable with. They don't want Jesus in their past. They don't want Jesus in their future. They don't want Jesus in their losses. They don't want Jesus in their money. And I don't mean like, I'm not saying people are being greedy and all that, but they don't want Jesus to make the decisions for them. Right. They want him just in a certain box. Lord, I'm going to keep you in this box. I'm happy that you're here, and you're very welcome to be in this box. Um, so, let me give you an example. Okay, say so you come to the Lord. And you are, usually when people come to the Lord, they're hurting. Right? Raise your hand if you're ever hurting when you came to the Lord. Yeah. Oh my, yeah. So, we say, Lord, get me out of this crisis. God, get me out of this jam. And as soon as they get out of the jam or the crisis, 
Texas. They say, thank you very much. I appreciate you. Bye. Because they only want him to be the Lord of their crisis, not of their whole world. Okay. But Jesus wants to heal us physically, emotionally, spiritually, every which way. Not just one. Um, you might have somebody in your mind right now that you're thinking, yeah, you know, as soon as that person got through the crisis, they were out of dodge, you know, they were gone. Um, I'm not trying to find fault or be critical. I'm just saying I don't want that to happen anymore. I don't want anybody else to get tricked up by the devil. We cannot, okay, say you're in your house, and you forgive me, I gotta walk around. Um, <laughs> say you're in your house, okay? And um, if you drew a little picture of your apartment or your house, usually people have a little, you know, kitchen, a little living room, a little place to eat. Put their kitchen table, a couple bedrooms, maybe bathroom, laundry room, whatever. If you if you invite someone in your home, <laughs> we <laughs> we've had oh that's right that thing is on I forgot. <laughs> <laughs>
Some people in here have had significant loss in their life recently. Do you know that Jesus is in that loss with you? You may feel so alone. You are not alone. He is the Lord. He is in that loss with you. You are not a walking alone. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, thank you, Jesus. Um, some, now I'm going to the younger people here. Some people will say, well, now, Lord, I, I like you. I read my Bible. It's on my, you know, device. I have a Bible on my device. How many of you have your Bible on your device? Okay, good. <laughs> and if you don't, that's fine, too, as long as it's in print. <laughs> Somewhere in your life. <laughs> Praise God. Um, so for the young people, Jesus is on your device. You have a cell phone already, I'm sure. You're going to get one pretty soon. If mom will let you, probably by the time you're 25, she'll let you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> That's not a bad thing. But the Lord's going to be in your social media, right? Good. All right. Yes. On every social media page, right. he's right there with you. Amen. That's Amen. not a threat. It's a fact. You say, oh, Jesus, and I worship you, and I praise you on Sunday, but you better not follow me on the Internet on Monday. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. No, Jesus, you're with me on everything I do on here. You're with me on everything I search for, everything I look for. Now, it, is that seem a little extreme? No. Why would that be, why would that be extreme? Jesus is your best friend. He's our Lord. He said he's going to be not with us, but in us. So everywhere we go, he goes. Praise God. We take him everywhere we go. And that's why we don't need to live in fear. Because we're not alone. Hallelujah. We are not alone. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. He's in our entertainment of every every type of entertainment. He's in our losses and he's in our gains. Yes. Yes. He's in the good times and he's in the bad times. I'm going to talk to you about a valley. And that won't be very long, but I'm going to talk to you about valleys. Okay, this was several years ago. Oh, my wife. Oh, it's got to be 10, 10, 12 years ago. I was listening to the Handel's Messiah. And I like a little classical sometimes. I have got a little class to myself. A little bit. Not a lot, but a little. And <laughs> I was listening to Handel's Messiah. Every valley shall be exalted. I can't sing like those beautiful baritones say. Whoa! <laughs> I can belt it out. Beautiful. And I said, Every valley shall be exalted. And it kept ringing in my head and ringing in my head. Every valley shall be exalted. Lord, what on earth are you talking about? I looked it up in Scripture. I knew it was right out of the Bible. Every valley shall be exalted. What on earth does that mean? I studied it and I studied it. Until I got every drip out of it. That I could anyway. Someone else did something else. But they were farming, farming community. It was written to people who grew their crops. You can't grow crops in ravines and ditches. No. It was wasted land. If you had a big ravine in your land, man, I could, if that was just level, I could grow a whole another huge amount of food. Mm -hmm. And what God promised is he was going to take your valleys and fill them up so you Growth out of them. Every valley shall be exalted. Only God can do that. The valleys in your life are going to be filled up and made strong and rich so you can grow crops. Hallelujah. That's not Uh, the 
answered song. The light walked through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I'm not alone. And the Lord said he's going to fill up that valley. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Just don't seem to work out. We just don't get that one answer to prayer. God, 
Oh, yeah, we're in church. We're going to talk about the devil. <laughs> because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walks about seeking whom he may devour. Now, I don't like giving him any credit, but we have an enemy. It's not just a joke. And we aren't afraid of him. But we know he's on the other side, right? He's not on my side. He's an adversary. He's an enemy. He's the devil. And he's always looking for a way to trip you up. And if he can't trip you up in one way, he'll find another way. And if that one doesn't work, he'll find another one. If you had an adversary trying to get in your house, you would go around lock, 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 lock. Spiritually, we have to start locking things up. Locking things up. You're not getting in my heart, devil. You're not getting in my flesh. You're not getting in my mind. No way. I'm locking you out of here. And how do we lock him out? Is letting the Lord be the Lord of every area of our life. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Praise God. And in closing, my last scripture, praise God, is James 1.22. Praise the Lord. Sister Patty, I'm sorry I didn't tell you that one. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. James 1.22. And I'm just going to go up here because I'm slow. <laughs> but be ye doers of the word and not hearers only. Don't just say you'll let the Lord be the Lord. Do it! Amen. Amen. Prove it to God. He's your Lord. Prove it to Him. Yes. So well, how do I prove it? You're proving it right here tonight. He's the Lord of your week. He's the Lord of your week. You put him right in the middle or the center, Sister Lily. The center of my life. The center of my week. Hallelujah. And not hearers only. Deceiving your own selves. I know plenty of people who have deceived themselves in thinking the Lord is the Lord of their life. But they don't serve him on Monday, and they don't serve him Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And they start thinking about what they're going to wear to church on Saturday so they can go to church on Sunday because they put them in a little rectangle. You can have my Sunday for about an hour and a half. That's it. Right? All right. Don't deceive your own self. Don't deceive your own self. When someone buys a stock, or a bond. They leave it in there. And they don't think about it morning, noon, and night. They just leave it in there. I bought a hundredth of a stock once. <laughs> I think I bought a share of like McDonald's once. And it was like one one hundredth of a stock. <laughs> or a share, or what do they call it? <laughs> I did it kind of as like a joke. I said, I'd like to see how this works. It's just kind of interesting to me. Don't laugh. <laughs> <laughs> and I, every once in a while, plug it in my phone to see what McDonald's is doing, you know? <laughs> and I got an email saying that I made two cents. <laughs> I'm not kidding you. I am not kidding you. I got it on my phone. <laughs>
25 when we're closing. Did I finish that up? All right. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. Praise God. Looketh into the perfect. That's like looking in a mirror. I look in the mirror and I say, Lord, what do you see? Because I can change and I want to change. I'm going to be what you want me to be. Yes. Praise the Lord. Let's all stand.